Good morning, everyone. Um, thanks for joining us. I want everybody to sort of take a minute, take a deep breath, and get yourselves ready to be immersed in what we like to call bush time. So welcome, and uh, I hope you enjoy my presentation. So welcome to Wilderness North. So Wilderness North was created 27 years ago. Uh, both my husband and I worked for the company previously, and in 2000, we became owners. Um, our roots are in angling. Uh, we cater primarily to the American market, but understanding that um, that market and the demographic is aging and not necessarily passing it along to younger generations. Uh, for the last four years, we've been reaching out um, and offering an adventure program. It can be as active or as relaxing as you want it to be, but we did realize through the process that our fishermen were actually uh, the original adventure travelers. They just didn't know it. So you'll see right here a picture of my husband and I. Um, we have two kids who have grown up in the business and who actively spend time in the summer um, working lots of times for free, which is great. Um, we are uh, the only award-winning uh, lodge of its kind in our area, in Northern Ontario. We re well recently, three years ago, we received uh, the Ontario Signature Experience designation. So. Every year you apply to become a part of it and we receive that designation and there there are other um, attractions that are not similar to us. There is other lodges uh, that are a part of it, but they are not adventure travel at all and they're definitely not in our area. So where are we located? You'll see on the map that uh, there's Toronto, Minneapolis, and then obviously further down south Chicago. Um, our main access point is Thunder Bay, Ontario. Uh, we have an international airport. There are 13 or 15 connections each day with three different airlines. And it's easily accessed through Toronto. It's a two hour flight from Toronto to Thunder Bay. And we recommend arriving the day prior. And then the following morning, our staff picks you up and takes you right to the airport where you fly directly to the green dock at the top of the acorn, which is Miminisca Lodge. As it says, it's about 400 kilometers north of Thunder Bay. It's only accessible by plane. And if you take a look at this map, you'll see we're in the area of, or just outside of Wabakimi Provincial Park. Uh, we do fall under the, its um, designation. And you'll see to the bottom of the screen, there's Algonquin Provincial Park. Algonquin probably sees tens of thousands of visitors each year. In Wabakimi, we're lucky to see, you know, 2,000 visitors, primarily because of its remoteness. So there's just a view of what you would see outside the plane. We do arrive at the lodge uh, via wheeled plane now. Um, it's much more... Um, efficient you get there in just over an hour as opposed to a float plane which could take up to two hours and just another aerial view of what you'll see along the way uh, we do fly low enough that you'll see rivers and lakes and trees and it's pretty amazing to fly and all you see are trees there's no development there's nothing So as I mentioned, uh, our lodge on the lake is called Miminisca Lodge, named after the lake. It was built in 1944 and actually is bigger than it was when it uh, first was built. Uh, it's the, the building with a brown roof sort of in the center. Behind the property or behind the buildings, there's you can see a sort of line in the tree line. That's our runway. Uh, we have a grass strip back there where we land our aircraft and cabins along both sides of the shore. So everything has a lake front view. Our cabins have all been recently upgraded. They all feature a Canadian theme. They're very comfortable places that are clean lines, comfortable furniture. You can sit up, put your feet up and not have to worry about it not being hardy and uh, able to relax. We do have three cabins that accommodate larger groups up to 12 
and four smaller cabins that accommodate groups of two to four. Great for families, each cabin has a deck with Muskoka chairs and a great view of the lake. A lot of the activity happens in the main lodge building. Uh, as you can see, the smaller roof of the dining room, that's part of the original structure. Uh, in the main lodge, that's where you'll find the bar, uh, the dining room, the TV room, and then some areas where you can sit down and read or play games. Um, several of the rooms overlook the lake and we have a nice rock patio where you can sit out front and has a beautiful view of the sunset each night. I am also a chef along with being the owner and uh, I've designed the menu to really encompass a lot of Canadian uh, elements. We try to use local products where possible. Obviously our uh, growing season's a bit shorter being up north. Um, so we use a lot of you know, local produce from Thunder Bay, Ontario wines, Ontario beer, and of course, fresh fish that's caught right from the lake. It's our version of farm to table. We like to call it boat to table. So literally, if you'd like, you can catch a fish and we'll cook it for you within the next hour. If your fishing's not your thing, then the guides can take care of that for you. But everything is homemade, it's hearty, it caters to the fact that you're outside doing activities. Um, I would say that my record for uh, weight gain for one of my guests was 10 pounds in one week. Um, so you won't go hungry. We do full breakfast in the morning, pancakes, bacon, traditional Canadian breakfast. Lunches are your choice of shore lunch or pack lunch or also the picnic that's laid out. It really depends on the activity and what each person is doing that day. Dinner, we like to have um, a happy hour before, so drinks on us, uh, local appetizers usually showcasing fish, um, and then dinner's three course deal, that's soup, salad, main, and dessert. Everything's homemade, nothing from a package. Uh, we get the freshest ingredients as possible, and nobody goes hungry. All beer and wine is included in the package, and it's all local craft beer from Thunder Bay and Ontario wines. The experience, of course, being on the lake is based around the water. The water is key to what we do. It was a key part to uh, the people that grew up in the area. Our guides are all First Nation guides, and we pair with uh, certified paddling guides and uh, nature people. So you have a First Nation guide paired with um, a canoeing guide or a hiking guide. And you sort of get the best of both worlds where you'll find out about the traditional uses for certain plants. You'll find out about historically significant spots on the lake. The lake is part of a river system called the Albany River that goes up into James Bay and then into Hudson's Bay. And it was key in the fur trade. There are several areas on the lake that were used as Hudson's Bay Post or Northwest Company Post, and your guys will show you those areas. The buildings, of course, don't don't stand, and you'll sit and you'll listen to a story about, you know, that was where, you know, the supplies were delivered, and they talk about it like it was, you know, a couple of years ago, but we'll actually find it was like in 1850. So the history is fairly recent, um, but you'll hear stories about guys that, you know, you'll go down be going and touring and maybe looking for wildlife and your guide will tell you that his mom was born on the shore just past the spot that you you know it just looks like a sand beach as I mentioned it's the only um, facility on this 32 kilometer lake there's nobody else there um, just our staff and our guides available uh, to do what you'd like paddling so canoeing, some kayaking, as I mentioned, wildlife viewing, black bear. Last year we had a black bear swim in front of the cabins while the guests were out drinking their morning coffee. Woodland caribou, which are protected, moose, eagles, foxes, beaver. And, you know, obviously it's wildlife, so nothing's planned, but we try to get you in prime situations so that sightings are possible more stand-up paddling. As you can see, the sand that comes out 
and it's kind of in a nice protected area that no matter what the wind is doing, there's always a spot to to enjoy some water sports. There's a building on the beach, and that's a sauna, which we fire up every day. Um, there's something to be said about being active, but there's also lots of time to just relax and, and be, sit on the beach, read a book, enjoy a glass of wine or a beer. Um, kids love the area. There's tons of sand beaches. The swimming's amazing. And it's it's just a great atmosphere for couples, for families. It's a perfect way to sort of disconnect and get away. We do have Wi-Fi, but it's only available in the main lodge. It's not available anywhere else on the property. And it's satellite Wi-Fi, so it's not, you know, big city Wi-Fi. You're not going to be able to stream videos, um, but it's adequate for sending emails or posting on social media. We take real pride in our First Nations culture of the area. As I mentioned, many of the guides were born uh, in the area, even on the lake. And we have first, second, and third generation guides working for us. So uncles, nephews, sons, fathers, daughters. Um, and they'll tell you stories of their lives and their past, which is not that, that far in the past. We start each trip with a smudge. And what the smudge does is it sort of just allows people to reset, open your mind, open your hearts to the experience you're about to have to sort of take a minute to breathe and just relax because you're on bush time now. This is a church that actually is on the lake and it's an interesting uh, combination of Ojibwe culture and Christianity. Um, the man that was the, the minister of the, the church is an Anglican church. His son is actually, our, I like to call him our Wilderness North Patriarch. Um, he's involved in many of the trips that come up to Mimeniska, it's his home. He moved to the lake when he was three months old and spent most of his life uh, learning his living, guiding, and uh, working on the lake. Just another example of the smudging ceremony we do. This is Andrew, and he has been working for us for almost 10 years. He's a third generation guide, and his passion for guiding and teaching people about his culture and about the stories he learned as a child, it, it really shines through when he speaks with everyone. So when the night falls, which in the summertime can be quite late, it can there can be light in the sky as late as 11 or 12 o'clock at night. Um, it's a time for bonfires, singing some songs. The staff is fairly musical, so there's always someone who brings out a guitar, enjoys some beers by the fire, maybe some s'mores or some marshmallows. And it's just a great chance, opportunity and chance for the guests to get to know other people. Uh, we do have different uh, types of guests that are there from all over the world. And it's nice to sort of break bread and have a drink by the fire. We do have northern lights. Sometimes it uh, happens quite early in the morning, so you have to stay up quite late. But we do do a watch when we know it's going to be prime conditions and we'll knock on your door to have you come out and see them. Uh, I've seen them as early as in June, but they are consistent uh, as the summer gets cooler. So later on in July and in August um, and even early September are great times to see the lights. As I mentioned, you can see them, but sometimes you have to wait fairly late just because there's so much light in the sky. Even if you don't get to see the lights, uh, the ability to see the stars and the different constellations without any light pollution is spectacular. You can I can sit on the beach and watch the stars for hours. Something that I didn't mention before, because we do uh, bring our customers or our guests in uh, by wheeled plane on the runway, we offer a sightseeing tour while, while you're there. So they get to experience that true iconic Canadian experience of taking off and landing in a bush plane. And we try to schedule it toward the end of the trip so that you'll see some of those key places you visited during the days. Uh, you can see them by air and see them from a different vantage point. We do definitely um, have some hiking and beach combing. It's, you're not going to go on a day-long hike. They're, they're shorter. Um, the flora and fauna in the area, again, talking about the different medicinal uses or um, practical uses of some plants, trees, 
uh, you get to hear it from sort of uh, the First Nations culture and then more scientific. Uh, and it's kind of neat to see the differences between the two different explanations. So our package is a four-night package. It includes the round-trip flight from Thunder Bay to the lodge, accommodation for four nights, all your meals and snacks, all the acti guided activities, local wine and beer, all the sports, the use of the sauna. So pretty much once you get to Thunder Bay and we pick you up, we'll take care of everything. We do offer a laundry service uh, once throughout the stay, understanding that it is a smaller portion of a longer stay. Uh, we also do uh, luggage service. So if you're not taking everything with you up to the lodge, we have locked facilities where it'll stay and you can pick it up at the end of your trip. What's not included is the flight to and from Thunder Bay, any gratuities, and then any other personal expenses. My thing is not working. Okay, there we go. Uh, what we do recommend doing is adding an, an additional night, which we can help coordinate, arriving the day prior and spending that day in Thunder Bay. Um, we would have a, uh, a sailing tour uh, on the Great Lake. Uh, we'd add a trip to the historical park, which sort of sets the scene for um, going up north. It sort of gives the background to the fur trade explaining the, you know how crucial the area was in that and then night's accommodation and some restaurant recommendations for Thunder Bay. It's we are traditionally an industry town here in Thunder Bay but over the last few years have really um, bloomed and blossomed and have quite the culinary scene kind of a cool little kitschy downtown area and it's starting to pick up there's some walking tours and food tours that that are starting to become available here in the area, as well as different hiking, mountain biking, um, sea kayaking on the Great Lakes. So lots of different opportunities right here in Thunder Bay, especially if you like the outdoors. And that is it. I thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please let me know. Krista, thank you so much. Do you know what? I, I think I feel more relaxed already just listening to your presentation and watching the pictures like it, it works it works um thank you so much it's such a unique and and wilderness product that's the true canadian wilderness right there so um that's wonderful i'm sure everybody else has also just added it to their bucket list so <laughs> Um, yeah, they, they just get longer, these lists, but that's a really fantastic experience. So everybody, if you do have any questions, please type them into the chat box now. So Krista, in terms of when you say it includes all the activities, do you just choose what you want to do each day then? Um, yeah. Or do you pre... So we have, a, we yeah. have an, um, an example of an itinerary that we provide, um, but it really we really like to personalize it. So each evening you'll sit down with your guide and talk about what the next day holds, what's the weather doing, what's the wind doing. We're not going to make you paddle across the lake if there's, you know, 40 knots of wind. So, or if it's raining, we might say, okay, there's some crafts that we can do inside or it's going to be a sleep in day. So it's really important to customize it to what each customer wants. So that's why we meet every day to decide the next day. And, as I said, you're on bush time, so if that means the next day you don't want to do anything except swim, have a sauna, read a book, that's totally an option as well. Cool, sounds good. Um, and how many, so how many guests and how many staff do you have on site at any one time? Um, so max number of guests is 28, and our staff ranges anywhere from 10 to 14. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, no other questions coming through, so I think we will sign off there. Of course, everybody, you can have access to the recording. I will send that out and also post it to the Facebook page. Um, and also, Krista will do some follow-up information with you guys as well, so you can uh, learn a bit more. But Krista, thank you so much for joining us. It's been uh, so wonderful to hear about a new product for us. Um, and on the East Coast as well, which is fantastic. So thank you, and everybody have a great day. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day.